Hello, welcome. Thank you for coming today. My name is Pasquale DeMaio. I'm the general manager for Amazon Connect at AWS. And I'm really excited to talk to you guys a little bit about Amazon Connect and the promise and what our customers are doing with it. Um, I'll start by giving you a little bit of a background on Amazon Connect. It's our cloud-based contact center that's omni-channel and enables customers of any scale to deliver exceptional customer service. And really at the heart of that is the fact that it is cloud-based. That means you can use it from anywhere, customers, remote, remote workers, or in a standard brick-and-mortar contact center can use it. Incredibly high-quality audio using the Opus codec that allows you to have a great experience, your agents to hear wonderfully, and, uh, and the power to scale up and down to virtually any workload. All of that is interesting, but it's only interesting it allows you to do great things with it. And at the heart of that is the fact that it's a single application for all of your use cases, whether that be across channels, whether that be across customer needs, all the tools inside, the management of it. It's all in one, one location, allowing you to really maximize your efficiency and drive results really, really quickly. And I'll talk a lot more about that a little bit later on, but one of the core things that enables that is the fact that really from the ground up where it was born, with the AI at its core. Um, and that enables you to do all sorts of powerful things in terms of understanding customer problems, recognizing what customers are doing, enabling agents to perform at a higher pace, making them superhuman. Uh, at the core of one of those things is Amazon Lex integration. It enables very natural interactions uh, with powerful text-to-speech so you can have really, really great voice interactions and automated solutions. And then taking those solutions and passing them off to your agents uh, when that's the right thing to do whether that be because of the complexity of an issue or the fact that a human touch is really what matters to that experience. All of this is incredibly um, valuable for solving individual problems, but in aggregate, I, I would imagine almost all of you have seen a massive shift to using analytics to improve your customer service. How many folks in here um, run a contact center? Some contact center people, I see some, some folks out there. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, at Amazon, we um, run a few contact centers, including one that's quite large, about 100,000 customer service agents. So I imagine, much like you, um, we find incredible value in looking at the most minute details of how we can improve both the outcomes and the speed and performance of how we achieve them. And that's a key power of what Amazon Connect does. Uh, and, on, and because of this, we've designed the system to be open. So folks can access and control the solution however they want to. They can integrate incredibly easily and potentially, most importantly, they can pull all of their data and configuration back out of the system too. Uh, you can get access to your most detailed customer records, things like that, or contact records, which really puts you in control of the solution. And what that does um, is enable these self-service scenarios where you can really innovate incredibly quickly because you are in control of what Amazon Connect's doing. You don't need to hire expensive proprietary professional services, although certainly we do offer people who can help and have partners who can. You really are empowered to do it yourself. And um, almost every configuration aspect of Amazon Connect can be handled both with a graphical user interface or with APIs, depending on what your preference is. So, Putting the cherry on top of that, all the scalability, all these capabilities are made even more compelling by the fact that you pay for only what you use. And that's great because I think one thing we've learned in the last few years is that you may see radical differences in what you need from your contact center one day to the next. And it's hard to predict what your capacity needs, and you certainly don't want to pay up front for a bunch of stuff you aren't going to use, but you never want to be trapped in an emergency where you can't get what you need. And I'll talk more about that too, but we've seen people double or triple their needs in, within hours in Amazon Connect, and that's something we're prepared to enable for them. Uh, that scalability combined with a business model that makes that incredibly um, efficient and cost effective has been really compelling to customers. And when you put all of this together, what we've seen is a massive um, engagement with uh, all customers of almost every vertical in size, whether that be someone like Slice Pizza, relatively small contact center serving food, or John Hancock, a bigger contact center. Uh, if you look at someone like Cap One, a lot of financials, insurance folks love the security and reliability plus the scalability of it. Uh, and across all different walks of life, um, even Morrison's, who is a retail outlet. So we see that folks, almost everything they're doing in the contact center benefits from these core value props. But today I'm going to talk a lot more about some other things that we're doing. Um, and we innovate incredibly quickly on Amazon Connect, and we are driving new features out. Since launch, we've had 170 major features and many, many more minor ones that we've launched. There's a number of them you can see there on the left. I won't read them all to you, but these are just a few that have come out in the last few months, and we've got a couple of um, really exciting ones this week as well. Um, and I'll talk a little bit more about those in a few minutes. But the real point of this is, is that we're, our pace of innovation is very high. But that's not what's compelling about it. What's compelling about it is that your pace of innovation can be very high. 
In fact, when Gardner asks our customers why they choose Amazon Connect, roughly two-thirds of them tell us it's because of the innovation they can drive with it. And so it's not surprising to see that. Um, we see our customers making improvements to their contact centers constantly and continually, and this enables them to do things they thought were impossible just a few years ago. And I think if we look back on the last few years, one thing we could all agree on is it has been surprising. It was very hard to predict what was going to happen, and we've dealt with a lot of changes. Uh, I'll ask again, how many people here have had to move people to remote locations for their agents? Folks, I see, yeah, okay, so, so almost all of you. Uh, it, you know, that is just one example of this. Uh, the, as the cloud, as these things changed, one of the things we saw was it was very difficult to predict what you would need, but it was almost continuous change. And the cloud really helped keep us together in that regard, the nature of it allowing you to access it from anywhere, the scalability of it. This was something that was um, incredibly important uh, for our customers across AWS, but I think in very few places more than in the contact center. Uh, but the other thing that was happening was not only were you facing business challenges and, and personnel challenges and all these technology challenges, but your customers' expectations were only increasing. Um, the customers wanted more, and they wanted to do it differently than they ever had before. And it really shined a light on a lot of the limitations that folks were seeing out there. Our customers told us in their previous solutions that they had a hard time delivering on the channels they wanted to for their customers, meeting their customers where they are. Um, they had a lot of difficulty innovating in self-service. Self-service has had a pretty bad name in the industry because of years of press one for X, press two for support, press three, and by the time you get to number eight, you can't remember what number three was, and you couldn't tell the difference between number four and number five, right? And so these were really, really painful experiences. Uh, and the experiences were that way because they weren't personal. They weren't tailored to the customer that they was, was engaging with them. It was just the same thing for everybody. And, and they were hard to build, and it took a lot of thought and upfront planning for it. And then at the end, testing was extremely hard. All of this was just due to the unnecessary complexity of the situation with these, with these tools. Uh, on the other side of it, the agents, who often are the, one of the only, in some cases, but one of the major interaction points you have with your customers, we're, being, we're having a really difficult time doing the thing they do best, which is empathizing. Have people here ever sit in with their agents and listen to them and listen into those calls? I know that I certainly have done it a lot, and I'm always blown away by how amazing these people are, how passionate they are about helping people, even in the most difficult situations, even with the most difficult customers. Um, the thing about that is, Agents are dragged down by the things that aren't high value for them to be doing, like authentication, you know, doing basic tasks like checking a balance. Like these aren't things that an agent brings a lot of value to, and a customer is not really excited about waiting on hold to talk to an agent to do these things. What you want to do is have that technology recede back and allow the agent to come to the forefront and help those customers do the things that that customer really wants to get done, and then use that, bring that human touch to it. And so we always want to build our technology to do that. And so that's really what all of our innovation is about. And that's also one of the big reasons why we've played such a huge investment in machine learning and AI. So I want to start by walking through some of the ways in detail that this new offers a new customer experience. First, I'm going to start with some of the omnichannel aspects of this. We've seen a proliferation of different of different omnichannel act modes, uh, whether that be straight web chat, but often on all these different um, all these different messaging services. And so we just recently re um, released our chat messaging streaming API, which makes it incredibly integrate any service that allows integration, essentially. So as you can see up here, there's a ton of them, and we've done some of these the first party. You can do um, any one you want, or also our partners have uh, added a bunch of the long tail here for you to be able to leverage this stuff. Again, about meeting your customers where they are, and a number of our customers have used chat to solve customer, their end customer problems much more quickly and to Reflect calls, but with better outcomes. We had one customer tell us that they were saw a 30% increase in customer satisfaction despite lowering contact rates by roughly the same amount. On top of that, um, one of the prime opportunities for artificial intelligence is that NLU and powerful neuro text-to-speech experience that can make those interactions feel natural. The thing that's great about this is that you can no longer have to have those long, difficult uh, press one, press two, or even say or press one or press two, but instead really ask the customer what they're trying to do. But you want to take it beyond that. You don't want to just have the, you know, how can I help you and leave the customer to guess, and plus they also kind of feel like they don't know what they should say, uh, and end up saying agent, agent, which is not the outcome anyone wants, right? And so the goal here really is to make these much more tailored. And so we've made our system incredibly simple to integrate with your backend data. 
And what that allows you to do is create these very, very natural experiences. So I'll give you an example. If you're running a bank, for example, you may, wanna, you may see if a customer's calling, and you may see that they're overdrawn. So there's a pretty good chance that's what they're calling about. They're probably frustrated that they can't make a purchase, or they're, they're scared or nervous. And that's a really painful experience for a customer, and they're not really interested in listening to a touchstone service during that time. And you could say, how can I help you? But that leaves the customer to try and explain what they want to do, but they may not know exactly what they want to say. Or you could say to them something like, I see you're overdrawn. Do you want to do something about that? Which is kind of a, not a really polite or nice thing to say to your customer. But another way to do this that's adaptive that I think is even more compelling is you can say something like, hey, would you like to make a payment? Would you like to contest the charge? So you're hinting to that person the things that you know will solve their problem while still giving them the feeling that they're empowered. And these are the kind of ex experiences that take what is often considered to be a painful thing and make it delightful. You know, customers are calling because things are going wrong typically, or they have a challenge they couldn't solve themselves, or they're nervous they can't get it done fast enough. Another example being um, if you think about an airline who might have a, someone calling in because their flight just got canceled, and that person is probably freaking out a little bit, right? And you want to make an incredibly powerful experience for them and solve it really, really fast. So you can, instead of saying, how can I help you, say, I see your flight was canceled. Would you like me to book you on the next one? And that immediately can alleviate a lot of the pain and suffering that person's having at that moment and turn, again, what is a painful experience into one that's hopefully more delightful. Um, and they, of course, can also say, no, actually, I'd like to be booked on the flight the next day. And you can work them through that. And if they have a more complex problem, then obviously pass them on to that agent. Now, everything I just said is really compelling. I think we'd all agree we want to offer these, these automated experiences that are great, but it's hard, and it's been hard. Um, with Connect and, and Lex, with our tight integration, and the fact that it's all you know, graphical user interface based and you can create these things yourself, we were able people to bring this down to about um, a couple weeks to a month to build one of these, design these bots typically. That was much faster than what we saw broadly from other services and offerings out there that typically required very complex and proprietary professional services to do most of the work and would have monthly turnarounds for every iteration and you had to go back and test it and if it didn't work right, it was back to the drawing board. Um, which was great, like that's nice to bring that down. But we went and talked to our customers and said, what's the hardest part about this process for you? And their answer was pretty clear. Um, they resoundingly came back and said that upfront design of the chatbot is really hard. You're sitting there listening to all these calls and you're trying to understand what the customer's doing, maybe of transcripts, but it's a very labor intensive thing and there's room for a lot of error. And so um, I'm here to tell you about an announcement that just happened today a few minutes ago in, in Swami's keynote on artificial intelligence. But we are announcing automated chatbot designer for Amazon Lex. And what this does is it can analyze all of your transcripts, which can be created directly in Amazon Connect for every call, um, and looks at exactly what your customers and what your agents said to each other, and then builds the design out for your chatbot. This takes that, month, that two week to a month process and brings it down to around two hours. Now you still have to build a chatbot, and you're gonna wanna take some personal touch and, and make this great. It is a, one of the core ways you're gonna interact with your customer. But this revolutionizes your ability to get started and to start with a, from a footing where you're really doing it in both in a data-driven way and one that's very thoughtful about what your customers are really trying to do. Uh, so we're incredibly excited about this because we think this is going to really help democratize and enable many, many more people to offer great automated experiences. Um, the last one I'll talk about in this customer experience is outbound calls and notifications. Historically, this has been a fairly siloed area where you'd buy a separate solution to do outbound, and that can be kind of painful because you're losing in a lot of the information and context across things, and also, you may not want to talk to your customers on one channel. You may decide, I want to try a text, I want to do a, I would like to do a, um, a call, I want to do an SMS, I'd like to do an email, um, or I want to do a combination of those things. And so what we did was we consolidated those down into one omni-channel offering and enabled these high volume outbound communications. So customers are using this now and we use predict octave, uh, offer predictive dialing here. And um, I love the anachronism of answering machine detection. We call it a call progress detection. But this enables you to really improve the performance of your agents by not having them have to wait around to pick up the phone and hope that a person answers on the other end uh, and speed things up. And also we meet your customers again, meet them where they are and where they want to be found. Uh, so we're really excited about this. This is in preview. If folks are interested about it, we'd be happy to get you set up and, and have you take it out for a test drive and see how it works for your business. But um, it's something a lot of our customers had been asking for, so we're really excited to offer it now. Now, we talked a little bit here about aspects that we're automating that are about trying to solve the customer's problem up front, and I think we agree most customers are pretty excited about getting their problem solved up front. 
But again, at the heart of the contact center for most folks are the agents, and they are the angels who are delivering the outcomes your customers care about. And so I want to jump into some of the experiences we're enabling for agents. But first, I'll play a little video here, which I think talks to it, and um, I hope hopefully enjoy, you enjoy it as well. Oh, yeah, no problem. No, thank you. Uh, another satisfied customer. Morning. Welcome to my humble abode slash office. In this room, it's not uncommon to hear things like, Sam, you made my day, or you're my hero, or thanks for that room upgrade. Who am I? I'm a contact center agent, of course. You're probably asking yourself, how can he be so amazing? That's genetics. But how can I continually solve my customers' problems and exceed their expectations? Wouldn't you like to know? Okay, I'll tell you. It's Amazon Connect, a machine learning powered contact center service that improves customer experience. And believe me, it's a total game changer. Check this out. Morning, Shirley. I see you need some assistance with your upcoming hotel reservation. You'll notice that I didn't need to verify any of your information because uh, Shirley opted that her voice ID be confirmed by voice biometrics. It's a fancy way of saying that the computer recognizes her voice, so I don't need her to verify her mother's first grade teacher's last name. Oh, so you're traveling with your dog now? Not a problem. I went ahead and booked you for a pet friendly ground floor room with access to the courtyard so that your dog can get some much deserved sun. Amazon Connect will now queue up Shirley's updated reservation reminder along with hundreds of our other customers who have hotel bookings next week. Anything else I can help you with? Restaurant recommendations, sure. Let's check out those delicious eats. Amazon Connect is machine learning enabled, so it gives me a wealth of knowledge at my fingertips so I don't have to scramble searching for a restaurant and keep Shirley waiting. Okay, it looks like I have an Italian, Thai, and classic American restaurants right around the corner. Maybe you should try all three, or as I say it, a world tour. No, Shirley, thank you. Amazon Connect makes my job easier, which in turn helps me make my customers happy with every call. Maybe it's time to modernize your contact center with Amazon Connect. Well, back to work. Hey, Bruce, how you doing? Oh, great. So hopefully that was enjoyable, obviously a little tongue in cheek, but also I think I, you've, you've probably seen your agents with that level of engagement. I certainly, when I go sit with some of our Amazon.com folks, the way they engage with their customers is one with great empathy and, and enjoy really, um, even in difficult situations. And one of the first things you noticed there, and he talked to it, but was that those, that voice ID technology is allowing voice biometrics and other ML tools to both detect the actual customer, enabling them to skip all those painful mother's maiden name type questions, last four digits of your social security number, which are both super painful for the customer, particularly if they have to say them over and over again, and also are very easy to spoof. So that's a really nice thing to get that out of the way for the agent, so they're again focusing on the customer. And this also allows you to detect fraud so you can take actions and forward calls to fraud departments and things like that when you see something that's not where it should be. Beyond that though, like identifying the customers is obviously a really great outcome, but then you need to know who the customer is. And if you're like most businesses, you have a lot of technology around the industry, uh, sorry, along the enterprise and also a lot of customer data out there. And so we found a lot of our customers were having trouble consolidating that into one place so they could access it. You know, some of it was in a CRM, some of it was in an order system. And so we built customer profiles to allow people to pull that stuff in together in one location. And the thing that's really great about that is you have very quick access for it throughout the contact center for your automated experiences and uh, probably more importantly for your agents as well so they can quickly pull up that information there. And he talked a little bit about knowing, recognizing who that person was. That information over time becomes very, very powerful, but only if you can access it and use it together as opposed to having to search an alt tab back and forth between all your systems. Another tool that we've offered that's based heavily in machine learning as well is, is contact lens for Amazon Connect. 
Contact Lens is a, one that's a pretty interesting tool because it can listen to every single call and transcribe them instead of the olden days where you'd have to have a supervisor randomly select calls or maybe try and pick them out using some algorithm, but not a very effective one, probably listening to 1%, maybe 10% at the most, but probably closer to 1% of all the calls. This can listen to every single call, and it can do it in real time. So it can be used to provide supervisors information to act on while the call is happening or the agent information to act on while the call is happening. It detects sentiment analysis. It can look for, it can look for um, items in the call that indicate that there's something going wrong that you recognize and want to act on. For example, if the person says, I want to cancel my subscription, or my order arrived broken, or I want to return my bicycle, these are the kind of things that you can, you can detect and actually notate directly within it automatically, and so you know when to go back and check these things. Um, and that is a really powerful tool for folks to be able to do speech analytics with. Uh, but one of the things about this is one of the outcomes of this was these long call transcripts, which are really useful sometimes, but often also require the agent to still take notes and do a lot of after call work to try and consolidate what the thing was. And supervisors then have to go read these things and try and figure out what happened. With a brand new um, uh, capability we're announcing today and launching today uh, is our call summarization. So this actually takes those transcripts and brings them down into a very usable um, list of what actually happened in the call and labels things in there like issues that it defines and also action items you might want to have the agent take up afterwards. Uh, you can still always get back to that full transcript if you want and there are plenty of good reasons to do so, but this really saves a lot of time for those agents and for those supervisors. And again, lets them get back to focusing on solving customer problems, not wrote in, in menial labor tasks that aren't adding a ton of value. So another one of our, our core um, ML investments we've made is in Amazon Wisdom. Like, much like customer data, we found that, we, that our customers also had a lot of knowledge base and, and action data around their enterprises, and it was hard to get it in front of the agent at the right time. And so we built Wisdom, which takes information in, and you can pull it in from other sources like uh, Salesforce or, um, or Zendesk. Uh, and, and that allows you to pull this up and present it directly to the agent in real time so that they can actually have access to this and move very quickly to solve the customer problem. Uh, and that's a compelling thing, but what's really interesting is when you combine this with contact lens, you can take that actual real-time analysis of what the customer is saying, that issue detection, and plug it directly into Wisdom so we can return in real time what the customer is asking for. We can, and then the agent can do this without having to, be, um, to, have to sit there and type and search for, for results. Now, of course, they still can do that, uh, but, but it's really nice to have that happen automatically. Uh, and we do it in a way that's subtle so it doesn't bombard the agent with information because, again, we want this technology to recede back and be really powerful for the customer to have a great, um, for the agent to have a great focused conversation for that customer. Avoiding again all those alt tabs as well across all those applications. Another really powerful one is tasks. And tasks is another channel essentially of agent work. And you can use these to track virtually any agent activity you need to have happen. You can assign them, you can track them, you can note their completion, you can then measure them and understand what your agents are spending their time with. This is really powerful because folks love to actually know what their agents are doing and you can see where they're wasting time or where they could be doing more. Uh, really helpful to understand it and also get sort of all those post-it notes you've probably seen on your agent's windows or on their um, monitors, which are, are definitely not an effective way to manage your time and to get things done. When you bring all this stuff together, of course, though, it's important that it work well in a seamless experience. And so out of the box, we are offering uh, an agent experience now. Now, we know a lot of you will use a CRM, like a Salesforce or a Zendesk, or maybe a ServiceNow style application for tracking things. And we also know a lot of you are building your stuff. So this stuff is all composable. So you don't have to use the out-of-the-box version. But if you want it, it's right there for you to take advantage of. Um, we see a lot of our customers uh, doing a lot of really amazing things with their, with their agent experiences to shave off seconds at a time and create less confusion. We want to make that as easy and efficient for everyone to use. Another low-code, no-code offering we have is the way you design your contact flows. And you can get started on this in a, very quickly. So I mentioned that you, know, you could build ML and NLU experiences, those automated experiences yourself. Uh, we bring people in for one of our immersion days, and we'd love to bring you in for one of them. And they build a contact flow literally in the morning. And by the end of the afternoon, they've actually built custom NLU experiences, those automated experiences with those natural language uh, personal uh, solutions that are tailored to what they're doing. Now, you'll probably spend more than one day 
day building your entire contact center's automated experience, but it's pretty powerful to know you can make changes in a day. And with the built-in A-B testing, you can actually make data-driven decisions about what you're doing every day and run experiments. Intuit told us they went from running literally one, one, zero or one experiments a year to running 100 experiments in a year and using each of that set of data to make better decisions moving forward. Another area that we've also built that's really interesting, I think, is a rules engine, which is built directly into Connect. So you can imagine those if-then-that scenarios, where if I say, I detected that this customer said I want to cancel my subscription, I can create a task for a supervisor to follow up with that customer later, give them a call back, find out what the problem was, or you know, maybe a task that needs to be done said the customer called and said, I want to have this thing happen, and it's going to take some time. You don't want to leave them on hold while that happens. You can create this task, and when the task is completed, you can automatically then have a call back to the customer. This is really powerful for enabling you to, do, um, to, to do, take action based on what's happening in your context in an automated way so things don't fall through the cracks. As I noted earlier, you can do almost everything in Connect with the graphical user interface and drag and drop, but there also are a lot of people who find a very high value in using programmatic um, app, um, applications to be able to drive consistency and make sure everything's going exactly the way they want to and also to have things replicated over and over again. For whatever reason, if you do want to build out those things, Amazon Connect is also offers a broad set of APIs to do configuration and to create and drive contacts. So it's really up to you. Do you want to do the graphical user low-code, no-code version? Do you want to use the APIs or do you want to do a combination of both? And, and we see most of our customers doing a little bit of both, but I'm but, um, really depending on what their preference is. All of this comes together um, into a pretty broad set of technologies, but the nice thing is all these things, if you look in the little center of this picture, are coming together to provide one seamless experience for your agents, one seamless experience for the different folks who work within your contact center, the managers, the supervisors, the folks who are doing it, deep dives in the analytics. And that's one of the things that we're incredibly excited about is that we're bringing all these pieces together so you don't spend time wasted on what we call undifferentiated heavy lifting, doing the things that aren't bringing real value to your customers. Instead, you can focus all your time on, on bringing that value to your customers. At this point, I'd like to bring one of my colleagues up. Uh, Allison Budiskre, would you mind coming up? And <laughs> did I get, I was pretty close. <laughs> Please come up. Um, and if I don't mind, I'll hand off to you to take us through some of those real-world customer experiences Great. so you can talk through what they're benefiting from. Thank you. Thanks, PQ. It's a really exciting time to be at Amazon Connect. Uh, it's great innovations that I just shared with you, or PQ shared with you. But I want to talk to you about how some of our customers are actually using some of these innovations. The first one I want to talk about is Vodafone. You know, here at AWS, we've been really lucky. Our teams and our partners have done a great job on being able to help customers innovate on their customer experiences, optimize on their operations, and be able to help customers reimagine how they do their customer service. Vodafone is a great example of that. You know, we're customer obsessed, and so are they. Uh, what they did is they actually just completed an Amazon Connect uh, migration. Uh, it took over about a year, but when they started, uh, they were actually had over 660 inbound numbers, that 81,000 IVR uh, interactive options that a customer could navigate. If you think about that, think how complex it, that is from a customer perspective. Now that they've migrated, they actually have over 1,500 staff and partners that are using Amazon Connect uh, across voice and chat, making them one of the largest Connect implementations in uh, New Zealand. Recently, in August, they also implemented HANA. HANA is a virtual self-service concierge. It's actually really cool because it's in a completely Kiwi persona. And what I mean by that, it actually interacts, interacts and utilizes Maori phrases to interact with clients. It also uses that natural language, how may I help you, where can I direct you type of prompt in the beginning. And customers have really adopted it. So it's one way that they've actually implemented and obsessed over how they can improve their customer experience. The next one I want to touch on is Traeger. This is another innovator. They've utilized Amazon Connect. They have actually implemented Lex when they reimagined their entire self-service IVR experience. But recently, and for those of you that may not be familiar with Traeger, they, are, they provide wood-fired pellet grills to food enthusiasts all over the world. And um, they are using uh, and just implemented Apple Business Chat. Uh, as an additional contact center channel that a customer can interact with through their 
um, app. Their, um, app. The, the grills themselves can be controlled via, you know, again, you're an app on your phone. You could be inside, right, um, and decide what your cooking temperatures are. But you may also in, interact through that app with an actual Traeger grill specialist if you have questions or troubleshooting about your grill. This actually is an awesome implementation. It took two weeks um, from start to finish, uh, and it actually already became the very f the largest uh, and the best first call resolution channel that they have. It's a great example to me of customers who listened to what our customers wanted uh, and implemented and innovated on a, you know, in a, on a regular experience that they already were showing uh, and using via voice, but now providing and meeting customers where they want to be via a messaging application like Apple Business Chat. So next, I actually want to introduce Ken Meyer, who's the EVP and CIO of Truist. Uh, he runs the innovation and customer service experiences for Truist, and he is going to actually share with us his AWS and Amazon Connect story. Ken? Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Uh, before we get started, many of you probably have no idea who Truist is. Um, we actually are about to celebrate our second birthday. Uh, the reason why you may know of Truist is it's the home of the World Series champion Atlanta Braves. So you might actually saw it on TV a little bit, which, is, which was great marketing for us. Um, but at the end of the day, who is Truist? Truist is now the seventh largest commercial bank in the United States. Um, we have not only more of a regional presence from a retail footprint perspective, predominantly on the East Coast and the Southeast, all the way over to Texas, uh, but we actually have more national businesses than many know. Uh, we have national businesses in our real estate footprint for commercial real estate, our corporate investment bank. We are actually the seventh largest uh, in, in the, the globe around actually uh, providing insurance services to both retail and wholesale clients. So we, uh, you know, we were formed ultimately by the merger of both BB&T and SunTrust banks, both uh, who were large regional banks, very successful banks in their own right, and why in the world did we decide to ultimately step into the largest bank merger in 20 years? Um, the reason was simple. Uh, scale matters, and technology is ultimately one of the biggest drivers in our merger. Um, we realize that the, the pace of innovation and client expectations are going to continue to change, and we had to do something about it. Uh, and when you think about, okay, well, where do you go from there? That sounds really good. A lot of bank technology is really old. Uh, it's a really siloed. You know, how do you create those experiences? Back to what was said earlier, you know, we wanted to make sure that, that our clients understood that we knew that they deserved better and our teammates deserved better. Uh, so we started down a path uh, with a partnership Actually, just before our merger, we really kind of you know, jumped into a partnership with, with AWS and started looking at the AWS ecosystem, if you would, and tried to understand how could AWS ultimately help us you know, achieve the, the goals that we wanted to. Uh, and you know, once that merger was announced in 2019 and we were able to start you know, our work, we've been all in on the partnership with AWS and, and we've created some really fantastic experiences for our clients. Uh, you know, we obviously don't look at it as just, let's go solve for contact center, let's go solve for digital, let's go solve for branches or ATMs or whatever the different channels are that we're interacting with our clients. We look at it as we're trying to interact with our clients and provide the best possible experience for them that they could possibly have when it comes to interacting and achieving their goals and ultimately allowing us to fulfill our purpose of inspiring better lives and communities. And so we've built native uh, solutions for online banking and mobile on AWS. We're launching new chatbots next year built on Amazon Lex. We've uh, actually dabbled in working with Outpost this year, which is gonna be critical to our, our core bank conversion, our final big conversion that we have in Q1. And then we get to ultimately things like broader partnerships around our innovation center that we've uh, just launched and opened in Charlotte, North Carolina and our headquarters and a partnership with, with AWS uh, on exactly how do we go solve real problems in an innovative way. But then there's the connect story. 
And the reality is, is in 2018, I came to reInvent and I sat in a room like this and we had some of our teams and we said, man, this is, sounds pretty cool. Um, we ultimately you know, decided that we wanted to start to launch some instances of Connect. We were able to start that launch uh, shortly after that and, and get something up and running pretty quickly. Uh, 2019 came, we started discussions around what were we going to do to better the client experience for the contact center. And then the world changed in March of 2020. Um, we, at that point, had a small number of agents on Connect in some different pockets. Uh, and we looked at it as an opportunity to showcase the power and the innovation of Connect to a lot of executives you know, that we just met for the first time because we were three or four months old as a company. Uh, and many didn't really understand the possibilities and the capabilities that Connect could potentially bring forward. And you know, we had real problems to go solve for uh, in short amount of time. We had clients that couldn't pay their mortgages. They needed payment relief capabilities. And when you have that much stress on your clients, the ability to actually talk to somebody is something that we probably take for granted. And who wants to sit on hold waiting for a contact center agent to talk to you about the fact that you can't afford to live in your home? Uh, we were able to spin up an instance of Connect for our mortgage contact center agents, provide more capabilities, uh, not only to those agents, but our clients, and do it in a matter of days. Uh, and get them trained and up and running. We had technology teammates on our teams that were fighting, you know, still fading, hey, you know, I run this contact center in, a, in our data centers and we need to protect the sanctity of the data center and make sure that everybody has a job. Uh, and they weren't super excited about the idea of moving to a cloud-based, uh, you know, contact center system. And ironically, uh, when they were having trouble meeting SLAs for our own teammates and servicing internally, they turned to Amazon Connect, and we got them uh, ramped up quickly. We were actually done in days, and it took them a little while to get you know, up to speed and, and ready to go, but in the matter of weeks, we moved our entire internal help desk over to Amazon Connect. Uh, and you know, when we talked about, again, getting through uh, and creating better experiences for our clients, we uh, just recently announced internally and externally that we are moving all of our contact center agents uh, to the Amazon Connect platform by the end of 2022. So we're really excited uh, about these different capabilities and, and not only the, the capabilities that come with the Connect platform, but that broader ecosystem. And you've even seen it with some of the announcements that were, that were made around you know, integration with different, different capabilities like Lex and, and chat and whatnot. And you know, the great thing is, is we've got a fantastic partner in, in AWS that helps us bring all of these different solutions together to create a better experience for our clients and for our teammates. Um, so we're really excited about where we're at. Uh, I would uh, encourage all of you to take a really hard look if you haven't already. Uh, and you know, we'll happy to answer any questions later, but back to Allison. Thank you, there we go. <laughs> Thanks, Ken. And what awesome story. Thank you for trusting us with, you know, your, well, thanks for sharing your story, but thank you for trusting us with the future journey and transformation of Truist. So, you know, I think I want to just, as we're winding down this presentation, um, you know, I just really want to just really focus on, for us, for AWS, our, we're completely customer obsessed. We're looking to innovate and change how customers are interacting with contact centers and provide a very differentiated customer experience. From our origin where we started as an, you know, an Amazon retail customer service solving for a very specific issue to now our vision over the last five years has never changed. We want to make it easier to deliver an exceptional experience for customers and for agents. And the way we do that is by this constant innovation. You just, you know, PQ shared, you know, since five, five years, we've done 170 major launches, 45 here in 2021, and that pace of innovation is not slowing. Um, everything that we do from providing customers those channels of choice and what we just talked about with the messaging streaming APIs, um, you know, what Traeger Grills is doing, that's a great example, meeting customers where they want to be in their channel of choice, 
providing intelligent, intelligent self-service, right? Those options and languages and coverages uh, with things like Lex and AIML to be able to provide that differentiated experience and not tra trap customers in those IVR, uh, in the IVRs, um, in the old-fashioned uh, IVRs and modernize overall how that works. Uh, the way that we look at providing and just reducing the overall friction that customers have when they're interacting with our contact centers, making it easier, making, not, making it something that they don't dread versus have, you know, the, 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 custom, the contact center is that channel of last resort for, con for consumers. It's actually making it easier for them and making it a pleasant experience where they do want to interact with us. Uh, and then all, all, also, you know, that personalized, consistent experience that we want to do. And so we talk about customers a lot, but just think about SAM. When you have a contact center agent and we can, imp and we can improve the tools that they're using, how they're interacting with customers, helping them not be focused on all those systems that they tend to alt-tab with. I did a study a few years ago. Customer agents typically have about 15 different types of applications that they interact with. Reducing that, giving them tools, giving them, giving them that intelligence to actually focus and become customer obsessed, customer that they're interacting with uh, at that time can you know, really pay dividends from the customer experience perspective uh, and, the, and the satisfaction that customers have in interacting with the contact center. Um, so not only do we continue to innovate, but we're completely focused around what our mission is. And we continue to do that, right? And we have ways, though, that we can help customers. We have ways to help a transform customer experience. Um, we certainly have a whole list of resources that we can bring to bear, uh, professional services, right? We have the, you know, programs. Uh, we have support. We have SMEs that can really help educate you uh, and help educate your teams on the possibility of what we can do with Amazon Connect, and we want to be able to help you with that. And, of course, we would never be able to do all that without some great partners that we have in place. Uh, we have, we've been blessed with a great ecosystem of partnerships within Amazon Connect and AWS in general as well. We have customers like Accenture. We have customers like Deloitte, Local Measure. Um, you know, all these customers, Voice Foundry, that really have been partnered with us, have been hand in hand since the beginning uh, in delivering differentiated innovative experiences with Amazon Connect. Lastly, as we are winding up, um, you can get started doing all this today. I encourage you to log in. Uh, I bet before I can finish this presentation, you can log into the AWS console, uh, answer a few configuration questions, uh, you know, uh, be able to gather, a, you know, gra grab a phone number and be able to take calls in about 15 minutes. It's that easy to start with Amazon Connect, right? And then we have the richness of the ecosystem of the additional services, the things that other things that we can bring to bear to really differentiate and elevate your experience. So I encourage you to um, start and doing some research and seeing what else you can learn about us. We also have more information about our innovations, the things that PQ just talked about, the things that you've seen in the rest of the sessions from SWAMI, AIML. We have blogs, uh, so we encourage you to uh, definitely interact with those. Uh, find out more information from our demo sessions, from the expo. Uh, we have lots of great SMEs and resources that are here uh, in our essays and solution architects that are almost, well, always ready and willing to answer questions. And then as you interact, if you're in person, of course, this is a list of all of the different sessions that you can attend uh, or watch afterwards, um, as well as if you're, you're, virtual, you're virtual, these are also the sessions that you can interact with. We encourage you to come back to these. Uh, we have a rich ecosystem of people here that can help answer questions. And lastly, right, as we wrap up, um, I want to thank PQ and his uh, product team. They are an amazing group of people so focused on innovating for our uh, customers every day. So thanks for that and thanks for the innovations that were launched today. Uh, I also want to thank Ken for coming and sharing his story. Uh, it's super exciting to see what Truist is going to do and their vision for changing customer experience. So lastly, I will thank you for attending and we'll open it up for questions. We'll stand an appropriate six feet apart. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hard to see. Okay, this guy's got a question. So earlier in the presentation, you talked about integration transcripts from machine learning. I'm assuming you can take those transcripts from any other system outside of 
Uh, yeah, it, the, uh, we support it. They have to be in the right format. Obviously, you need to be able to tell the agent and the customer part and stuff like that. But absolutely, we, the transcripts can be pretty generic. That's a great question. I don't know the answer. We can find out, though, for you afterwards. Um, I, I, think it, I think it's both, but it might be V2 only. It's a really good question. Thank you. Uh, yeah, we can do that. He was, um, the first one was, can you use transcripts um, from other systems besides Amazon Connect to create those automated chat, the automated chatbot designer outcomes? And the answer was yes, you can use them as long as they meet some requirements, which is pretty standard mm -hmm. requirements. Um, and the second question was, uh, do you, can you use it with um, Lex V1 or V2, which V2 is a, a much superior version to V1, but there are folks who are still using V1 and, and, and like it a lot. So I, I was on a, I'm not quite sure on the last one. I will have to follow up afterwards, but I'm happy with any question we can't answer here, yeah. you can come up and meet me afterwards or uh, happy to, uh, you know, we're happy to take down and follow up with you guys. We also have a mic over here. So if you have a question, oh, yeah, that, there's that, a mic right there. But I think there's a question over here. So voice ID is actually a, a separate system. It can integrate with any of these solutions, but it's not pulling the data of the voice ID from there. So it, it will work with any solution where we have an integration. Um, folks have integrated with Dynamics 365 with Connect generally, and um, they certainly have done it with a lot with Salesforce as well. So uh, you can use voice ID with any, any essentially any, any agent and, and customer experience you want to. Uh, it all happens within the Connect uh, core code center, and that information can be passed out both programmatically and without and with no code to the agent. There's a question over here. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> can you talk about the agent experience? Like you're talking about using agents using Connect as well. Does it complement with other CRM systems like Salesforce, Verint, and other things? Or can it actually perform as a CRM system by itself? Yeah. I would, not, I, I would say I would not call Connect by any stretch a CRM. Um, I, it's a, we are designing tools that enable people to great, create great agent experiences. But uh, something like Salesforce is a, is a, very, uh, a very complex and powerful tool. And um, we, we have an amazing partnership with Salesforce. In fact, we even power, we power both their own contact center. They've chosen us as a customer, mm -hmm. but also as a partner uh, who go to mark with us. And we power their new offering, Service Cloud Voice, which is a really compelling um, mechanism for folks to um, for folks to be able to, to um, get right down and have an end-to-end -end solution that covers all of those service cloud capabilities, plus you can seamlessly integrate with the agent experience with Connect. And we have tons of other folks using like you know, ServiceNow, Zendesk, and also a lot of folks build homegrown ones. Um, in fact, more folks use homegrown by an agent count than any other mechanism for in, you know, broadly in the industry. Our data indicates that more folks are growing, their, making their own agent experiences because when you have one of those really big contact centers, you every single second you slice off can be millions of dollars by the end of the year and better, much better customer outcomes. And so we support all, all three of those mm -hmm. options. You can use out of the box. You can use, the, you can use a, a great integration with Zendesk, Salesforce, et cetera, and of course, um, a build your own. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, it's just uh, providing choice. Mm -hmm. Another choice. Another choice customers can use from an agent. Um, you know, lend, lends a, lend a lend, you know the lens that they can give to that that customer. You know, if you're using customer profiles or things like that, we just want that 360 view. Uh, yeah, yeah. In the case of uh, in the case of Salesforce Service Cloud Voice, for example, the agent would have no mm -hmm. idea that Connect is being used. I think you wanted to make a comment yeah, about yeah, this. Yeah, I mean, we've been a long-term standing mm -hmm. client of Salesforce for a really long time. Uh, at Truist, we were one of the first financial services enterprise clients back at Heritage SunTrust days. Um, that's exactly what we're doing, right? So our clients or our teammates would actually log in through Salesforce, but then ultimately seamlessly integrate. Uh, to the Connect platform, you know, through that integration. So, uh, we definitely don't see us using Connect as a CRM platform. Question? Yeah. 
Yes, uh, great question. So the question was, are you going to improve the ability to um, use best practices around data, creating new versioning and things like that with contact flows and other aspects of Amazon Connect? And the short answer is absolutely. Um, you know, there are some aspects of it which, which um, will take longer than others, but we continually innovate on this in this aspect of it. We also use a lot of the AWS um, best practice tools like CloudFormation and stuff like that, and we're adding support for these things, Cloud Trails. So you're getting the benefits of what is, you you know, the world's largest uh, infrastructure service uh, organization who have built tons and tons of tools for de to make developers' lives easier, and we're trying to use all those best practices. In some cases, with contact flows, because of the nature of your dev operations and your, and your, um, and your production ones, there, there can be some challenges to have to point to different things, and so there is require some tools to update that. But we have a number of folks who have implemented them in very rigorous dev Dev, um, dev prod environments, you know, gamma, beta uh, prod per environments. And so people are definitely doing that, and we'd be happy to talk to you more about it, but, uh, but we know there's more we can do to improve, and we are constantly innovating in that space. It's one of our, you know, the overall contact flow experiences, one of our top areas of investment. Question? Yeah, so I, I would just say from a client perspective, you know, um, I'm not sure uh, everyone in what industries you're all in, but we have some regulation uh, in banking. <laughs> uh, we're, we're super, they're, they're great partners. Um, but yeah, I mean, we've got compliance folks that are looking at, you know, not just in the sentiment analysis, but across all of our channel and all of our interactions with our clients to make sure that we're not doing anything that would be perceived as, as not a good thing for the client. Yeah, I, I think we're looking at, at native capabilities, and you can talk about that as far as not just sentiment analysis and, and compliance, but also, you know, agent productivity. I mean, there's, there's also, you saw the partner ecosystem. There's multiple tools and solutions that are seamlessly you know, integrating with the platform that we can also introduce as part of that, that ultimate ecosystem that we're creating that can be bolt-on add-ons. But I mean, to the extent that we try to do as much as we can within the platform, that's something that we're taking a real hard look at. But yeah, the, the great question about um, compliance, obviously a huge issue. Contact Lens explicitly can be set up to look for the things you need your people to say, and there's, there's a lot of different tools we have with that, and with the rule stuff, you can actually then set follow-ups to deal with challenges and problems that might have occurred, and, um, you know, and, and those things can happen real time. So uh, there's a ton of work we can do there. Obviously, compliance is a hairy thing, so no one should, if anyone ever stands up and says, don't worry, we'll make you 100% compliant no matter what, you should be very afraid of that person because it always is going to be a, a shared responsibility where you're going to have to uh, evaluate it, but we build the tools and, and for both the security standpoint and compliance standpoint to enable you to deliver that stuff. And um, where every every instance is probably a little bit different. Every compliance team has slightly different views out in the industry, but but we're very used to solving those problems. We're HIPAA eligible, you know, we're we're um, SOC and uh, and, and PCI um, compliance. So we have all we we can enable a lot of these different things, and then the tools can add additional layers on top of it for what you're saying to automate that. Um, contact lens is an important part of that story, so we can dive into that. And contact lens also is capable of redacting stuff um, in the transcripts as well, so detecting things like social security numbers and redacting them, which is a pretty important aspect of that as well. It saves a lot of time. You have a question up front? Yeah, so Amazon Connect uses uh, other services under the roof, like, uh, like Lax, but also like Poly um, for text to speech. However, a lot of the languages yeah, so I, I think uh, one of the things we made a very big investment in the last year is actually in a thing called NTTS uh, uh, voices, which are these neural text-to-speech voices, and they sound a lot better. In fact, we just released French this week, and mm -hmm. I sent out an email to the team to ask the French folks what they thought of it, and they said it's night and day different. Um, we're doing a lot of that across our across a lot of languages for both um, e Americas, EU, and uh, in Asia, and to, in Asia to to make those experiences better. Um, we can talk if you have a specific language you want to ask about. We should take that uh, offline. We can get uh, answers on where it is, and, and you also can help influence our roadmap. Uh, Ninety-five percent of all the features that are 
are in AWS products come from direct requests from customers. Uh, we like to say 5% to go try some other stuff out too, but, but we're really focused on trying to make sure we're delivering the stuff you guys need. Uh, and the voices are getting much, much better. Yeah, time for one more question. Yeah, I mean, I think um, one on the integration thing, I think it's all about kind of pace and, and what you can consume. Um, we've, in certain cases, when we had crisis type events, whether it was, you know, setting something up new for, for PPP or, or, you know, some sort of COVID related thing. I mean, that's a little bit easier because we're, we're staying super vanilla, very simple, not doing a ton of integrations, right, to downstream systems. Um, but when we talk about you know, scaling the platform to the entire uh, enterprise and thousands of contact center agents across all of our different products and services, there's a significant number of integrations that we're looking at right now and that we're in the process of doing. Um, you know, we talked about a little bit of the Salesforce integration. Part of this journey for us is not just you know, the telephony, IVR, connect type capabilities, but it's truly the full agent experience. And being able to leverage a singular desktop, I think the gentleman over there was kind of alluding to it, and the desktop's only going to be as good as all the integrations that you have in the back end. Um, the great thing is, is that you know, with an API first type of an architecture with Connect and everything, the, the integrations are a lot easier than they might have been years ago working on some of the, the platforms that, that I know we have and that others have. Um, also, you know, just the sheer number of capabilities. When we look at our current platforms that we've had to support our, our teammates and clients, you know, we, it's something as simple as a callback capability, in order to deploy something like that, we had to build a lot of custom code and integrate it upstream, downstream. Um, and then, you know, if something breaks, God forbid, it takes forever to figure out how to triage and fix it. And those things are just, they just, they're there, right? They, it's part of the platform itself, and it's already integrated into the platform. So it's simplified quite a bit of the architecture that we had to do um, you know, from a contact center perspective. Uh, the other piece is just change um, your question. I, I would tell you the wins that we had along the way right, to introduce the platform and talk about not the technology, but the, the outcomes, right? It was about decreasing the amount of, of wait time for our clients. It was about providing new capabilities and services to both our clients and our teammates. So it's not about technology looking for a problem to solve. It's truly about leveraging the technology that's available to us to actually provide the type of outcomes and client experience that we're looking for. Um, so once we were able to prove it, and we started small. I mean, right now we've got about 30% of our total agents across all different areas and groups on the platform. And once they get it, and once we started creating some of that buzz, you know, you've got our business partners that are actually running the contact center you know, themselves, super excited about bringing more and, and starting to scale it and providing those capabilities. The other piece to it is the training curve is so much easier. Um, you know, we were able to train agents in a, in a day. Um, and we were able to, back the, the language, one of the, the groups, the ironic part about even our COVID, thing, I think Spanish was the first group that we actually trained because it was a smaller group. We wanted to make sure everything was working properly. Um, and we were up and they were up in hours uh, once, we, once we got them, you know, on the platform. So, I, I think it's kind of, you know, been very, I mean, it's been a long road and we're also in the middle of a big whole merger. So it's not exactly, you know, we're not, this isn't our only focus uh, right now, but I think, you know, the, let the platform speak for itself, but get your, get your business partners, if you're on the tech side or vice versa, engaged, right? I mean, they're part of laying out the roadmap, understanding what the outcomes we really want are, and we're, we're ultimately, you know, headed in that direction. Yep. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for joining. Please join us at the Expo. Um, there's some, a demo theater we have out there. You'll be able to see a lot of the, uh, all of the, the innovations that we just spoke about. You'll be able to see those there. So thank you for joining. <laughs>